Good evening. I'm Brandon Presley. And as you might be able to tell, I'm speaking to you this evening inside a closed down emergency room in a shut down hospital. But before I tell you why I'm standing here tonight, I want to tell you a little bit about where I'm from and who I am. I grew up in North Mississippi in a small town called Nettleton. It's not a one stoplight town, it's a no stoplight town. It's a little dot on the map and like many towns in Mississippi, it's the kind of place that Tate Reeves probably doesn't know exists and doesn't care about. When I was growing up in Nettleton, my mama worked at the local garment factory before it shut down. Then she became a preschool teacher at the local church just up the street. She raised me, my brother and sister in the house that I still live in today. Back then, you could see straight through the floor down into the dirt. But with my mama's trust in God, we never felt as poor as we really were. My daddy was an alcoholic who never made it to recovery. And on my first day of the third grade, he was murdered in cold blood. My life, like many of yours, has had its share of tragedies. But with that faith in God that my mama taught me, I've been able to push through bad times, just like so many of you who are watching tonight. I've been there. And so I know how you feel as you struggle to pay the bills, get the groceries, and just hope that maybe you can make it to the next paycheck. But thanks to the values that I learned in that old house, I did push through. I went to college. I ended up being the mayor of Nettleton to fight for my neighbors and the folks who helped me become who I am today. We got Nettleton moving again. We cut taxes twice and balanced the budget. Since then, I've served on the Public Service Commission to fight for families and against special interests who too often rule the roost in state government. We opened up closed door meetings where the public was shut out and we brought transparency to our state agency. I voted against boondoggles like the Kemper Power Plant and saved taxpayers over $6 billion. Many times, I had to stand alone. It takes guts and backbone to stand by yourself when lobbyists and the folks with big campaign checks oppose you. That's called leadership. We don't have it with Tate Reeves, and that's exactly why I'm running for governor. But tonight isn't about me and my story. It's about you and your story, your family's story, and your community's story. It's about the Mississippi that we want to build together. So I ask you, do we want to keep going down the same old path that got us here, or do we want to start winning again? Tonight, I listened to Governor Reeves' State of the State address. I watched his leadership over the years, and I know and see what you know and see. Mississippi is full of good people, but we're led by horrible politicians, and it's time for that to change. The reality is that under Tate Reeves' leadership, we're moving in the wrong direction. Nothing makes that clearer than where I'm standing tonight. I'm at what once was the Pioneer Community Hospital in Newton, it used to employ over 200 people. Now it's shut down for good. No doctors roaming these halls. No nurses tending to patients. No ambulances outside. No cars in the parking lot. Right now, there are 38 more rural hospitals just like the one I'm standing in, and they're on the brink of shutting their doors. If hospitals continue to close, the impact will be catastrophic. Jobs lost and health care for thousands gutted. Every time we close a rural hospital, folks have to drive farther and farther to see a doctor. And the true sad fact is that some will die. This is the reality that Tate Reeves has chosen to put us in. Make no mistake, he has made this choice. We have a solution. By extending Medicaid to the working people of our state, we can keep hospitals across Mississippi from experiencing the same fate as this one. All Tate Reeves has to do is lift his hand, take an ink pen, and sign on a line. Instead, he lacks the backbone and he will sit on his hands while people lose their jobs, some lose their lives, and our hospitals close. When Tate Reeves finally wakes up and asks why hospitals in Mississippi are closing, he should look in the mirror. And this hospital is just one example of how Tate Reeves and his policies are hurting our families. Mississippi is at the bottom of the nation for economic growth. We're one of only three states that have lost population, and the numbers recently released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics show zero job growth in Mississippi. We're one of only seven states in this country that tax groceries. 
In the Mississippi Delta, there's only one pediatrician for every 4,000 kids. It's no surprise that we lead the nation in the deaths of children under the age of one. How is that pro-life? What does all that tell you? That Tate Reeves is only pro-life until you're born and then he's done caring about you. While he brags about budget surpluses, family budgets are running out. And while you are careful with your own money, he's throwing your tax dollars away. He's been caught in the middle of the largest public corruption scandal in our state's history. $77 million of taxpayer money that should have gone to working families that are struggling instead went to fund things like a volleyball court, a volleyball court, and paid for speeches by famous people that were never even given. Some was even given to Tate Reeves' own personal trainer. And you should tune in because we're only just now learning how bad and how deep and possibly illegal all of this activity was. But I'm done talking about Tate Reeves. I want to listen to you. I want to fight for you. Together, we can build a Mississippi that focuses on the future, not the past. We can build an economy that works for everybody. And it all starts in Jackson next year with a strong ethics package that roots out corruption and ensures that our politicians are serving us rather than being sold off to the highest bidder. It's time to send a signal to the special interest that the party is over and their day of complete control of our state has come to an end. It continues by funding rural hospitals and police officers, not stealing from them. Yes, we should fund the police, increase health care, and invest in education. Together, we're going to end this insane tax on groceries. We're going to make sure folks from Walnut on the Tennessee line to Waveland on the Gulf Coast can walk with pride because they have a job and they have hope for their children's future. Mississippi, I love you. If you need me, you know where to find me. It won't be under the chandeliers tinkling glasses with the rich and powerful. It'll be with you. I'll be on your side. The holes in the floor have been fixed in that old house that I grew up in. But the values that my mama taught me and the love that made it a home are still there. Now, I don't care who you voted for or what political party you're in. I know that we're neighbors and we look out for each other. May God bless you and may God bless the great state of Mississippi.